सब्सक्राइब नाउ एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन नेवर मिस एन अपडेट वेलकम टू हेल्थ लाइव एट सीनियर्स टुडे वी आर डिलाइटेड टू हैव हियर विद अस डॉक्टर निखिल सरदार डॉक्टर निखिल सरदार इज अ सीनियर ophthalmologist at the Nanavati Max Hospital and he will speak with us today on glaucoma and eye care for senior citizens a little about dr sadar he is a senior ophthalmologist as i mentioned uh, attached to the nanavati max hospital after completing his mbbs from pune he did a post graduate training in ophthalmology from the armed forces medical college in pune he has spearheaded various ophthalmology departments and done countless uh, complicated ophthalmologic surgeries uh, we had uh, 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 as we know the world glaucoma day was observed last saturday which is march 12th and uh, uh, which is one of the reasons why we invited dr sadar to speak specifically on uh, uh, glaucoma and uh, uh, happy to have you here uh, uh, dr sadar thank you thank you thank you very much and uh, uh dr sadar i was just uh, since you are uh, part of the nanavati max hospitals and you know you're up close with things uh, that uh, that are happening in the in the medical field i know it's not exactly a an area for uh, uh, somebody like yourself but what is the what is the fear of fear of this new variant of uh, uh, of uh, of the omicron virus that is that is there fortunately it has not yet hit indian shores we are not having any patients as of now so let's wait and see and how do you uh, you know you are there the front line so to say uh, how do you kind of brace yourself for a possible threat uh, i have sort of given up now i have been in the thick of things since last 2 3 years i have got covid two two three times maybe uh, i was at the forefront with that black fungus uh, they used to get infected na the black fungus as you know right 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 to right, affect right. the eyes also and then it goes to the brain from nose it was eyes and brain so i i have saved 25 people's lives uh, we have a study on that going on i've completely rehabilitated them uh, it is like life before sight was the concept they used to come to us late when the eye was gone and it was going to the brain so to save the lives i had to completely do what is called as exenteration we can have a talk on that later on but that was once in a lifetime thing i hope we don't have to see that kind of black fungus again yeah, we completely yeah. removed their eyes and their ocular structures or surrounding and saved their lives and now they are living great lives healthy lives we have completely rehabilitated them uh, after 6 months we have put ocular prosthesis so something sort of a path breaking thing which i would not like to repeat or do again in my life because it was very sad right absolutely doctor i think uh, what we've been through is 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 really unfortunate and uh, clearly uh, you know it's people like yourself who are at the at the you know the front runners who have braced through uh, a whole lot of uh, you know uh, uh, crazy situations and uh, clearly uh, you know we we just we definitely don't want all of this to happen again uh doctor over to you for um, your uh, yeah. uh, session today if you um, uh, you have a uh, 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 a presentation so please go ahead those of you who have questions uh, as always please put them in the q and a tab and uh, just mention your age and gender so the doctor sadar could make a uh, give a more considered response and a uh, you know a specific one to your query mm-hmm. over to you dr sadar uh thank you and uh without any delay i will start i'll be talking on glaucoma glaucoma as you know is a silent blinder we we'll call it thief of sight because you don't even come to know that you are having glaucoma what are, you see on your screen on your left is a healthy optic nerve and on your right is a eye optic nerve with glaucoma so the damage that happens this is the damage can you appreciate this mr maheshwari 
Absolutely, I can. I can. Yeah. So, this is called the optic disc or the optic nerve, the whole thing. Can you appreciate? This is the whole thing, optic nerve, which is seen on the retina of the eye. Right. And this small white circle is called the cup. So, this is the cup and this is the disc. So, we call this the cup disc ratio. Okay. Understood. The, the cup is 50% approximately of the disc. 30, 40, 50. Okay. Can you appreciate the enlargement of the cup here? The pale area? Yes. Mr. Maheshwari, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. So, this is what happens. This is the destruction of the optic nerve ganglion cells. These are the, these are the optic nerve ganglion fibers. Thousands and thousands of lakhs of fibers are like this, collecting information from the retina and going into the optic nerve. Because of which there is this red pink color of this layer here. There is death and destruction of this layer leading to thinning of this layer as is seen in this photo. And that is why the optic cup appears larger because the nerve fiber layer around gets degenerated because of glaucoma. I hope everybody can appreciate that. So this is called a cup disc ratio. So there is enlargement of the cup disc ratio in glaucoma. I am talking when I talk about cup the optic, this is our eye. And our optic nerve is attached to the retina behind. Can you appreciate Mr. Maheshwari? Yes, yes, doctor. So this so, is so called, The text is not very, very clear. But this, uh, is, this is the disc. And right. the, the depression here is the cup. So this, this is the cup. And I'll go back to the earlier slide. So there is enlargement of the cup disc ratio because of glaucoma in glaucoma. Now, why this happens? This happens because number one, it happens because of increased intraocular pressure. Now, this raise in the intraocular pressure causes no redness, no pain, no reduced or blurred vision. I'm talking about why it is symptomless. As I said, it is a thief of sight or it's a silent blinder because it is symptomless. Symptomless means it does not cause any redness, does not cause any pain, does not cause any reduced or blurred vision till it's too late. Till it's too late means after 80-90% of the optic nerve gets damaged as shown in the earlier photo. Then we get tubular vision. The problem why it is a silent blinder or a thief of sight is because our central vision. That means the vision that we required for required for doing for reading, for doing surgery, for driving a car. That is called the central vision. Central vision is not affected till the very end. It does not cause redness, does not cause pain, does not cause reduced or blurred vision for chronically for months to years till it's too late. Now the causes, the causes why till today after 200, 300, 400 years of research, we don't know why after 40, one to two patients out of 10 develop glaucoma. Generally it is thought to be age related. Age related means the filtering channels. You know, glaucoma is caused when pressure in our eye rises. Now the pressure inside our eye <coughs> is maintained by a fluid called the aqueous humor, which is the internal fluid of our eye. You should not mistake it with tears. Tears are external. Aqueous humor is internal. The aqueous humor is secreted from our bloodstream, filtered, 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 and a clear transparent fluid goes inside our eye called the aqueous humor. It goes inside our eye, nourishes our lens and intraocular structures, and is absorbed again into the bloodstream. So the area from where it is absorbed 
is called the trabecular meshwork, which is in the angle of the anterior chamber of the eye. I hope this is not too difficult, but to cut it short, the area from where the aqueous humor is drained, it is like a sponge or sieve-like thing called the trabecular meshwork. After 40, 45, 50, that sponge-like thing stops absorbing aqueous humor at, as it used to. So hence, our pressure in our eye rises. Normal pressure inside our eye should be between 8 millimeters of mercury to 20 millimeters of mercury. However, blood pressure is 120 millimeters of mercury by 80 millimeters of mercury. Similarly, our eye pressure our eye pressure does not have a systolic or a diastolic difference. Eye pressure, like blood, unlike blood pressure, does not have a systolic or diastolic difference. It is standard, stable pressure, either 12 or 15 or 18. There is no difference when the heart beats and doesn't beat. So the pressure should be between 8 and 20 millimeters of mercury. Why? After a certain age, the waters, the aqueous humor stops absorbing from our eye is still unknown why there is fibrosis. That is the reason instead of remaining 20, the pressure in our eye goes to 24, 25, 30, 35. When it is so high, there is direct pressure on our optic nerve and the optic nerve as I showed you in that photo starts getting damaged. Now there are another other reasons like anatomical like people with high minus number, like myopia patients, they are also prone to open angle glaucoma, the silent blinder. And patients with plus number, high plus number, are more prone to what is called as, called as angle closure glaucoma. I will talk about that later. The final cause of glaucoma is secondary. Can be, that means because of trauma, or other ocular eye problems like swelling in the eye and because of the cataract and other things. I will be basically discussing more about the silent blinder variety of glaucoma, which is seen as 90% of all glaucoma cases. Of course, you are free to ask questions about the other glaucomas also. As I described earlier, there is an open angle glaucoma that is basically which is seen as 90-95% of our cases, which is mostly age-related and it is a silent blinder or thief of sight. Angle closure glaucoma is a totally di different, distinct entity, which is seen in patients with, most of the patients who have angle glauco closure glaucoma are patients with plus number, plus number or hypermetropes. In other words, they are patients with smaller eyes or eyes smaller than the average population. We have an average pop, average size eye, we have a small size eye, and we have a large size eye. Large size eye, eyes are the patients with minus number or myopes or short-sighted people who have minus number. Standard size eyes are patients who don't have glasses when they are young through their youth. And hypermetropes are smaller eyes who have plus number even during their childhood and formative years and youth. So angle closure glaucoma is not, it's totally symptomatic. Symptomatic, is, it is very, very painful. Patient comes with severe redness and pain in the eyes. We will be talking about this later on if anybody has any questions. It is not a silent blinder. So anyways, patient develops redness and pain in the eyes and they straight away come to us. The problem is the open angle glaucoma. Secondary glaucoma is again, patient is symptomatic with pain, pain and uh, other, other eye problems like uh, iridocyclitis and swelling in the eye. So they straight away come to us. Now in open angle glaucoma or see when a patient enters my clinic, he, they, he can be of these four categories. If, if they are glaucoma suspects, we, we will call a person a glaucoma suspect if he has any one of these four things. So these four things 
first is the physiological cupping physiological cupping is a person whose optic nerve when i see the optic nerve which i have shown you in the photo earlier looks as if it is damaged like the glaucoma patient but he does not have raised eye pressure he does not have any other damage and his vision is also normal with no field defects this type of patients are seen in those patients with large big eyes who are born with myopia and have big large eyes and it's a pseudo glaucoma like picture mane they are born with a big optic disc so correspondingly their optic cup is big and it is easily easily you know people get confused thinking it is glaucoma these are young patients they don't have any symptoms their pressure is normal we do advanced testing everything will be normal then is a patient with glaucoma proper or open angle glaucoma or the silent blinder which is seen in 90% of glaucoma patients now this patient when he enters my clinic for the first time his pressure will be raised his pressure will be about 20 when i look at his retina his optic disc as i showed you in the earlier picture will have a large cup disc ratio say more than 0.6 or 0.7 so there is already damage that has happened and when we do his testing i'll come to that later what testing we do the testing of choice that we do is called visual field assessment or perimetry in that we will get visual field defects also of glaucoma so this is a patient who is who's all three categories are positive high pressure field loss seen in perimetry and the retinal image also shows damaged optic nerve so this we label a patient as proper glaucoma and he is diagnosed as a glaucoma patient and he started on drops the most danger of type of glaucoma is this entity the normotensive glaucoma patient the normotensive glaucoma patient is a patient who has normal eye pressure they are the most they are the patients who develop severe field defects or severe advanced glaucoma uh, problems when first time when they enter my clinic they have a normal pressure say of 12 to 15 mm of mercury their optic disc when i see will have severe defect it will have a lot of cupping as i had shown you in the picture and uh, when we do the visual field assessment at the perimetry they have, they will have severe field defects so this is a very serious patient very easily missed because their pressures are normal so these are the patients who have generally who are you know uh, we are seeing them in ladies very thin frail ladies or a thin frail patient who has low bp patients with low bp and patients uh, who are slightly weak with hyper hypotension low bp are candidates for this type of problem they have sometimes nutritional deficiencies also nutritional deficiencies like vitamin b12 deficiency and d3 deficiency or some malabsorption syndrome like senior citizens they can be taking orally vitamin b12 and b3 but still they have persistent deficiency because of weakness in the stomach to absorb these vitamins that there is called as malabsorption syndrome so basically normotensive glaucoma is even with normal eye pressure still the optic nerve of that human being of that eye cannot withstand this normal pressure so it's dying so we have to especially investigate these patients whether they have any nutritional deficiencies or they have very low diastolic bp if if any patient with a bp of uh, less than 55 diastolic is a candidate for normotensive glaucoma and the fourth category is ocular hypertension again ocular hypertension is a uh, not a glaucoma patient first time the patient enters our clinic he has high pressure his pressure will be 25 26 but his optic nerve will not look damaged 
when we do his assessment with perimetry his there will be no visual field defects so these are the category of patients who are not suffering from glaucoma but who are showing high pressures so we have very number one they are, they are not suffering because their optic nerves are strong they can withstand high pressures and number two these are these certain patients with very thick corneas our cornea which is this most superficial layer of our eye if you know is some is the average thickness of the cornea is just half a millimeter that is 500 microns patients who have more than 500 micro 550 microns i'm sorry 550 microns is the average thickness of a human being cornea human cornea patients who have more than 550 micron thick corneas can show pseudo high pressures and patients who have very thin corneas can show pseudo low pressures i will come to that later in the question answer session but a patient with ocular hypertension does not need treatment because he does not suffer from actual glaucoma we need to just monitor these patients so we call them for regular follow up now as i have said how do we diagnose glaucoma or what are the investigations when that patient comes to me for the first time most important thing is the intraocular pressure which i have explained should be between 6 8 millimeters to 20 millimeters of mercury if this is less than 20 millimeters then the patient is normal second we do the visual field test visual field test is a many of you must have done it is a subjective test subjective test means the patient has to actively play a video game and press buttons and his field is tested at 24 to 30 points from where we come to know whether the optic nerve has damaged because in glaucoma we lose our field field what is the field when i close one eye when i look at a when i look at my thumb i can see my thumb even when my thumb is here almost 90 degrees from my eye without looking at the thumb i can i know my thumb is there i can feel that my thumb is in my visual field without looking at it that is what is tested in the visual field and that is what gets damaged the visual field constricts in glaucoma but the patient don't realize that and by the time it is so constricted that there is tubular vision tubular vision or tunnel vision as you call it when you can see, when you see look through a tunnel you can only see the light at the end of the tunnel that is called as tunnel vision or tubular vision which is, which is seen in end stage glaucoma as the progressively the visual field reduces so the visual field is the most important investigation to diagnose and follow up of glaucoma this is the gold standard pressure also can mislead us other things can mislead us but the visual field is the gold standard for measuring glaucoma test progression or diagnose and later on monitor the progress also now third is the central corneal thickness which i had explained earlier is 550 microns on an average any uh, and as the cornea becomes thicker then the measured pressure you know as you know pressure is force divided by area so when we measure the eye pressure we we press on the cornea with different machines you must have seen them you must have undergone eye pressure check with the with the air puff or any tono pen or the gold standard is the golden goldman applanation tonometer so all these instruments depress or press on the cornea to measure the pressure so for pressure is equal to force upon area so more force is required if the central corneal thickness is very high so if for example a, pa a patient's cornea is 575 microns thick, almost 20 to 25 microns thicker than the average population. And if we get a pressure of 22, then it is more than the normal. But still the patient does not need to be worried 
because we have to minus a few points because the cornea is so thick we have to pressure it more pressurize it more to actually measure the pressure so measured pressure is say 23 24 but we have a table we have a subtract subtraction table or fixed table where we add or subtract depending on the central corneal thickness so this central corneal thickness is a very important test before we label a patient as glaucoma or ocular hypertension or normotensive glaucoma. It, as I had explained before, central corneal thickness is high in patients who present with ocular hypertension. They are young patients, their corneas are very thick, more than 575 microns, 580 microns. So even if the measured pressure is fire is 22, 24, 25, the actual pressure opting on the acting on the optic nerve is less than 20. But the reverse is also true. The reverse is also true. The reverse is true in patients who have very thin corneas. These are the patients who have myopia, as I was explaining earlier, myopia or minus number or patients with large eyes. Patients who have been my, myopes or short-sighted since childhood, youth, in their adulthood and in their old age. So these patients have bigger eyes. So bigger eyes, so everything is stretched out, stretched out, stretched out. So also the cornea is also stretched out. So cornea is thinner in these populations. These. So the, a thinner cornea is showing us a false negative measurement. That means in a myopic patient with a thin central corneal thickness, if I measure the corneal pressure, I mean the intraocular pressure, it comes to 18. We should not be misguided that it is normal. A pressure of 18 in a patient who has a cornea which is only 497 microns or 495 microns thick, that is almost 50 microns thinner than average population. In those patients, the pressure when it is measured as 18 or 19 is actually 22 or 23 or 24 because the, it is very easy to depress these thin corneas. So even with less force, we are applanating the cornea and measuring the pressure. I hope you understand all this. If any questions are there, I'll answer later. The other things, these are the new um, modalities, what we call as optical coherence tomography, which we use to monitor the nerve fiber layer thickness. This came with a bang, but nowadays we don't depend on this so much as we depend on perimetry. Optical coherence tomography is reserved for macular problems more. Nutritional deficiencies, as I explained, very important in patients with normotensive glaucoma. We have to check out vitamin B12 and D3 and also malabsorption malabsor syndromes. We have to repair this by referring these patients to a physician or starting B12 or starting B12 injections to strengthen their optic nerves. So once their optic nerve is strong, that optic nerve can, can withstand that pressure, intraocular pressure, and prevent further visual loss. Final thing is gonioscopy. It is a objective test that we eye surgeons do to see the angle of the eye. This is generally reserved for angle closure glaucoma patients, which is a symptomatic eye problem, which you can ask questions later. When we come to treatment, now that we have diagnosed the open angle glaucoma, we come to the treatment. There are two types of treatment, medical and surgical. Medical and surgical. Surgic, uh, surgical treatment, our international prot protocol for surgical treatment is surgery is the last resort because in uh, surgery in glaucoma is very, very unpredictable. It is not a open and shut case like cataract or other surgeries where we have more than 99% uh, or almost 100% positive results. So surgery is done only when all medical treatment fails. Now, the baseline or the main base of medical treatment are the anti-glaucoma drops. There are four types of anti-glaucoma drops. One is, you must have heard, Timolol or similar. Other are the prostaglandin analogs. The uh, first one to be launched was Zalatan. They're basically latinoprost, travoprost, and bimatoprost. The third is brimonidine, and the fourth is dorzolamide. 
we generally like in blood pressure management we start with one we see how much the pressure is controlled if if we cannot maintain the pressure below 20 then we add another with these two if it is not controlled then we add another and if these three are not then we add the fourth the ultimate aim of eye surgeon is to maintain the pressure of the patient with glaucoma to less than 20 that was the original earlier concept when we started learning 20 years back now now the concept as our knowledge has increased has changed to target pressure the target pressure is the pressure that each human beings each eye we decide is required to be met to prevent further damage to the optic nerve because of glaucoma now target pressure reduces with what stage the patient comes to us in if a patient is already having 50% damage nerve because of glaucoma then i will not be happy with his pressures being less being around 18 19 20 20 with my drops i will have to have a target pressure for him of less than 15 only even if he achieve 15 mm of mercury he will be prevented from further visual loss due to or further optic nerve damage because already he has his optic nerve is 50% damage it is as simple if there is a strong man and if there is a weak man standing it is very easy to push the weak man even if you push if you even if you use two times the force to push the strong man he won't fall down but the weaker man can be pushed with a simply similarly the already damaged weakened nerve can be damaged further with a pressure of 18 or 19 that is why the target pressure in that 50% damaged nerve is 15 or less so my job and the patient job this is not the doctor in glaucoma there is it is not just what the doctor does 90% of the time we find patients having even further damage in spite of our treatment because the most important factor in managing glaucoma is compliance compliance means the patient has have to obey us they have to be disciplined they have to be strict they have to comply and achieve the target pressure by putting the drops religiously and regularly and intra day variation is more damaging to the optic nerve if if you don't put your drops properly and if you have a if my if your target pressure is 15 and you have put pro- properly for a few days and you are achieving that 15 but suddenly you don't put for some time and that 15 goes to 19 or 20 for some time and then again you put that sudden fluctuation also can be damaging more to the optic now so make sure that intra day variation also is not there you maintain the intraocular pressure accordingly now when so most of our patient fall in this category for years 5 10 15 20 25 20, till the very end we maintain the pressure of these patients uh, we decide the target pressure and try and maintain the patient with one to all of these four drugs to less whatever the target pressure is now if because of some after a few years of some because of some reason we cannot maintain the pressure with these four drops then we have to resort to tablet acetazolamide or dimox which is commonly used all of you must have used it sometime or the other in your life when you must have gone to leh ladakh for a vacation this is the same tablet which is used to treat altitude sickness this tablet reduces the intraocular pressure unfortunately this tablet we cannot use lifelong or chronically this tablet personally in my 20 years of experience i have used maximum 4 to 6 months in one of my patients because chronically if you use it it can lead to kidney damage and other problems <clears throat> and you have to always take some potassium supplement like a potassium syrup or banana or coconut water with this because you can it can lead to lot of electrolyte imbalance because basically it sucks out the water 
from our whole body, not only our eyes, it reduces the pressure by sucking out and reducing the aqueous humor in our eyes, but also our whole body. And it, it drains out and we, have to, we lose all the water in the urine. So this is our second last resort, which is temporary. Maybe month or two, we can maximum start it. And the final resort and intravenous mannitol, which is an injection we give to suddenly drastically reduce the pressure. The effect of this remains for 12 hours. This is for emergency purposes before we take up the patient for surgery. When all these efforts fail, we take up the patient for these three types of surgeries. The gold standard for glaucoma surgery is trabeculectomy. We, trabeculectomy is the main surgery for glaucoma. If trabeculectomy fails in the first attempt, then another can be tried at another location. If that again fails, then we have to resort to a shunt surgery called Ahmed glaucoma or shunt surgery. I will show you a small video of tri trabeculectomy surgery. Clean can audio. Can you hear? Uh, no, we can't. We can't see it, doctor. I think there's a problem with the no, video. Sadhguru is doing it. Two minutes. Thank you very much, doctor. Very detailed uh, presentation. If you if you find it too in depth, you can interrupt me and tell me to be more superficial. Huh? Yeah, I think we are. You know, we are at five fifty-five. So, how much time will you take? First, now this is the two videos are there. That's Fine. it, and then we can go to Q and A. Great. Uh, I wanted to show a video of uh, what I even do the most complicated surgery for glaucoma that is the Ahmed Gwal glaucoma. Just if you can show that video. Yeah. yeah. That is like if the trabeculectomy fails. Next slide. We need to share the screen again. Yeah, yeah. Next. Next. Let me see. So while he's doing that, you can hear me now. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so I'll give you a quick this on trabeculectomy. When everything fails, we make a trabeculectomy. That is, we make a hole in the eye. Now we are when we make a hole in the eye, we are we are cutting the conjunctiva, cutting the wall of the eye called the sclera, and making a small stab hole inside the eye, which chronically leaks water from the eye. So basically, we are permanently making a drainage system in the eye, and it cover is cover covering it by the skin skin of the eye called the conjunctiva. So these surgeries have a 50 to 70% success ratio. So, so that is the main surgery that we do. Even after surgery, it is not an open and shut case. We need to follow up the patient for at least a month after surgery. I have to see whether how much amount of drainage is happening. Very commonly, the surgeries, if there can be overfiltration. You can hear me, no, Mr. Mahesh. Yes, of course, I can hear you. Yeah. yeah. There can be overfiltration leading to what is called as hypotony. Hypotony is very low pressure. Our target pressure after surgery is 10 to 12. But the patient's eyes pressure, the eye pressure goes drops below 4. A pressure below 4 means the eye has become too soft. 
and the patient can blind, become blind because of a too soft eye also. That is one complication of trabecular laminitis. Second complication is it fails after some time. Uh, this is the there's a button on the left hand side. Okay. Now play this video. This is the advanced last resort of glaucoma surgery. Can you see that tube I am implanting? Can you yes. see that tube? I can't see it though. Bada kar. Can you see I can't see it though. It's too stuck. <laughs> nee, nee, re rewind karke. Can you see? Can you appreciate that disc like plastic tube, plastic yes. reservoir and with a tube ahead? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the glaucoma Ahmed shunt, Ahmed valve shunt surgery. This is the most advanced surgery for a damaged uh, after a lot of glaucoma surgeries. We can use this <coughs> drainage. That is a reservoir there. This is a plastic reservoir, and that is the drainage tube. That reservoir is. That reservoir is implanted inside below the skin of the eye called the conjunctiva. It remains on the sclera. And the tube, the tube is inserted into the eye. So this is the last resort of glaucoma surgery, the final frontier for the most complicated of complicated cases. I hope you can see that. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. So the complications are, as I've already said, low pressure or over filtration. Too much of the fluid inside of the eye is leak leaking. Second complication is failure of filtration, and third is infection. So I think we will go. So I think the take home message, my general take home message to all human beings are prevention is better than cure. Better to come and show us regularly. Have a six monthly, have a yearly eye checkup. As you grow older, have, make it six monthly and have a lot of sunlight, have a lot of sleep, have a good diet. There is no point of exercise if your diet is not good and have a good social circle with family and friends. These are the five pillars of life. And with that, I conclude my talk. I hope it was not too long. I'm open for questions. Thank you very much, Doctor. I think uh, it was a very good and detailed uh, uh, presentation. The very fact that you have had uh, people uh, have sticks, you know, over 70 people have been around on our, uh, on our uh, 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 Zoom session just now, mm -hmm. as well as uh, a host of people watching it on our various other platforms. Thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Sadar. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so we have quite a few questions that have come in. Can I just take sure. a question one by one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So um, the first question is from uh, um, from. Mr. Bridge Duggal, he says, I'm 78. Uh, my eyes are mostly under pressure, but I can see. My BP is normal. Should I see an ophthalmologist? Absolutely. There is one type of glaucoma. There are thousands of... This was a very short session. There are many more things that are there in glaucoma. But uh, there is something called as uh, senile glaucoma also. Where just because of age, the optic nerve dies out. So for that, even though the patient is not having high pressure, something of a normotensive kind of variant, but there is no low, low hypotension. I think I have seen in patients who are about 85, 88, 90, even with normal pressure, they, uh, their optic nerve can stop firing after some time. So we have to start anti-glaucoma drops as a neuroprotection, we call it, neuroprotection. Something like a normotensive glaucoma. So it is very important after 78, 80 to have an intraocular pressure checkup. For such patient, God is also benevolent. With increasing age, the aqueous humor production also reduces. So 
90 percent of the patients who are healthy and all after 70 to 80 also are fine but just to be on the safe side we should see that your iop is not 18 17 18 it should be below 15 if it is not below 15 then it is better to start a neuroprotective eye drop like brimonidine or something like that thank you doctor we have a question from uh... Mr. K. Surinayanan, he is uh, 70 years old. It's a long question. He says, I've been diagnosed with glaucoma in May 2005. I've been using bifocal lenses since 1992 and progressive glass from 2003. After diagnosing of uh, glaucoma in my left eye, I have undergone perimetry test, OCT nerve test, etc. Now I'm putting down, now I'm putting iodine 0.5% drops morning and evening every day. In the beginning, I used to go for perimetry every three months and eye pressure every month. Nowadays, perimetry is done once in six months and eye pressure in once in three months. Uh, doctor says my pressure and vision are okay. I had undergone cataract surgery for left, that is the glaucoma eye in May 2013 and right eye in 2018. Before the right eye cataract, there was a swelling and took injection and laser. I'm okay till recently, but off late, I feel the right eye vision is not pre proper. I'm due to visit the doctor in the next month. Can you, can you, uh, can you advise if there's anything to worry about the vision of my right eye? Uh, is he a diabetic? He has not mentioned that, Mr. Surinayan. If you're there online, can you just I tell? Because he is take, He also says I'm taking tele my tele me kind twenty every day for BP and BP is normal. See, if he has any blurring of vision, he should not wait for a month. At the age of 70, blurring of vision can be because of any diabetic macular edema or any other thing. Most commonly, it is most probably because of uh, the cataract surgery he had two years back. So he must have developed a posterior capsular opacification, what is called as chari in Gujarati. So let's hope it is that because that is a very benign thing which is removed with laser. But not to wait on blurred vision for a month when you're already 70 years old. That is my advice. He says he's not diabetic. He only has uh, uh, blood pressure issues. No, he can develop a macular degeneration anytime. So it's better. You cannot waste one month. Now that there is no restriction. You should go and show the doctor. Right. Thank you. We have uh, a lady who's 76. Uh, she says she has glaucoma since two or three years on iotin 0.5% and lumigan 3 ml. Is it lifelong? And uh, I, I know it's an unfair question to ask you, but can I try Ayurvedic treatment simultaneously? I have really no knowledge of Ayurvedic treatment. Really can't advise about Ayurvedic treatment. There are no confirmed reports whether it works or not. But yes, if you are diagnosed, you, have a, you need to continue Lumigan and Iotin. Before okay. stopping Lumigan, there are many patients, sometimes glaucoma goes away also. It is not written in any books or anywhere, but I have seen in my own practice after a few years, maybe because of age, aqueous humor production also reduces. So sometimes glaucoma is overdiagnosed and overtreated. Now that is another topic. So the only way we can stop a patient's anti-glaucoma drops is by, by uh, careful monitoring. You have to stop all drops. Take the pressure after 48 hours, take the pressure after, pressure after 96 hours, repeatedly take the pressure two, three times, and then when you come, come to know, okay, Baba, this patient is not taking any drops for 10 to 15 days now. Still, the pressures are not increasing, the pressures are not normal. So that means he was wrongly diagnosed as glaucoma, or he was misdiagnosed or overdiagnosed earlier, and now he doesn't require those drops, so we can stop them. That is the only way to stop anti-glaucoma medication once started because you have to monitor and decide. Right. Thank you. We have a question from Mr. Sushil Kumar, who is 74. He says, I had a laser done. IOP in th is 13 in both eyes. CCT is 582 and 577. He has a hazy vision using Ripatec and Flogel. Hmm. Yeah, so he's one of those thick cornea guys. So, uh, he has to, but he's not taking any, uh, what is he taking, he said? He is taking, uh, uh, he is using... Hazy vision. Him. The vision is hazy, then he has to come and show me, na? His cornea must be getting fired. Right, and he's been diagnosed as cataractic. 
हाँ तो कैटरैक्ट इज इज द लेजी बिजनेस बिकॉज ऑफ कैटरैक्ट सो इन गेट ऑपरेटेड राइट थैंक यू वी हैव अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एन अनोनमस अटेंडी हु सेज डस डायबिटीज कॉज ग्लोकोमा द पर्सन इज 65 मेल डायबिटीज एंड हाइपरटेंशन डायरेक्टली डू नॉट कॉज ग्लोकोमा बट द रिवर्स इज ट्रू बिकॉज देयर लाइफस्टाइल डिजीजेस एंड देयर इज जनरलाइज्ड एजिंग इन दीस पेशेंट्स फास्टर देन द नॉर्मल पॉपुलेशन मोर डायबिटिक्स एंड ग्लोको एंड हाइपरटेंसिस आर सीन टू हैव ग्लोकोमा इट डायरेक्टली डजंट कॉज ग्लोकोमा right uh, we have uh, a regular uh, attendee who says dr my son 41 years old is myopic since his school days and his number is minus 5 will it keep going up at age and no 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 myopia increases till the age of 18 maximum 19 20 21 after up from 18 to 20, 30 31 it remains stable after 31 we start aging the human body starts aging after 31 so myopia reduces after 31 at 41 it his myopia will reduce reduce only and he will now develop presbyopia like by bi, bifocal numbers don't worry uh, uh next question is doctor what can be done to keep eye pressure normal those five pillars be healthy right uh doctor we have a question uh, which has come by email it says uh, uh, doctor consulted an eye specialist in delhi io pressure is 19 and io ple is 20.7 cct re is 537 and cct leis is 552 my question is is there any preventive eye drop to check and control further deterioration is this an early stage of glaucoma exactly everything is borderline Uh, 20 in olden days, uh, 10 to 22 millimeters of mercury was considered normal. So this kind of pressure, 19, 20, with this kind of CCT, is uh, borderline or normal. So we have to monitor only. We have to monitor the visual fields. We have to monitor the eye pressure. We can't do anything uh, as a preemptive strike. Weapons like what America did in Iraq. We have to wait. There's no point of preemptive strike because. then that can lead to over diagnosis and over this um, uh, labeling a patient as a glaucoma patient and making him put drops his whole life is also something which has got you know we have to be we have to really confirm and then label somebody as a glaucoma patient who has to put drops all his life so this person's uh, his is very borderline he, he might not be a glaucoma patient he needs to monitor the pressures every one or two months take the perimetry every 3 months and then decide whether you know treatment should be started or not right doctor we are almost there near 6 o'clock i'll ask you two questions uh one is from mr bharat mehta says what is the symptom that shows uh, that you have to be operated for cataract uh, decrease in vision right and uh, another question is what eye drops for dry eyes dry eyes the latest eye drops of the two famous companies are optive and sustain ultra right and uh, another question is how does the lay, lay person identify that uh, uh, one is suffering from glaucoma that's the dilemma that's the irony the my first slide was it's a silent blinder thief of sight so the lay person has to go to the ophthalmologist and gets his get his eye pressure and feels done especially after 40 right there's a the, the last question i have is from hamida jivani who says for macular uh, pressure having central thickness of 334 will it get reduced with neva neva mac drops no so you can neva mac you have to put only one or one or two months it is not that corneal toxic there are vague reports of corneal toxicity but for one or two months you can put neva mac Doctor, we have a person. We have a question from Mr. S. C. Jain, who's eighty. There's many times picture gets blurred after some rest, say fifteen to twenty minutes. Vision is restored. I have shown to many opticians. Uh, my father and elder sister had kala motia. I have told this information to them. No one has been able to diagnose. Leave aside treatment. After some time, and the the vision gets blurred because his ocular tear film gets disturbed. 
to have a clear picture we we have we need to have a nice film over our cornea what is called as ocular surface disorder or dry eye syndrome so after some time the ocular it's like there is a tear film and there is a tear like on our lower lid when we blink blinking is god's god has given us this beautiful blink reflex when we blink the upper lid goes down picks up the tear like and forms a film over the cornea like the windshield wiper so upper lid goes up goes up and brings the tear tear like up and forms a film this film's quality and quantity gets damaged with age so we need a clear beautiful tear film to have a clear picture when we don't have we blink you know we blink and then try and make a clear picture so to improve this tear film senior citizens need to be on omega 3 fatty acid capsules like mega 3 or osmega or something like that life once daily life long osmega once daily life long you start taking that after 3 months you will feel substantial difference and use a premium quality lubricating eye drops like sustain ultra and see the difference after 3 months i cannot comment on what diagnosis what kala moti and all that he has i right. love to see him and diagnose uh somebody who said mr madhuka chokshi asked can lasix uh, cause glaucoma no and uh, does lutein l u t e i n improve eyesight yeah lutein zeaxanthin they are giving we are been using since many years to prevent macular degeneration in old age doctor i'm just asking you questions of people now who are above 80 one or two more questions that come in just uh, this is mr shankar chavan who is 82 he says uh, he's had no bp or sugar levels elevated he has undergone a right right eye cataract surgery 2 years back i have been to an eye specialist and they told that i have glaucoma in both eyes pressure being within 19 uh, uh, now after drops have reduced to 14 and 16 uh, what about cataract in the other eye cataract if his vision is deteriorating we have to do cataract surgery and glaucoma i mean glaucoma needs to be confirmed by visual field testing visual field testing or perimetry should show field defect that means he is suffering from glaucoma right doctor i don't know who's asked this question but uh, there's somebody who's asked can we have your contact uh, uh, is it okay to share or shall we just give the nanavati uh, hospital contact yeah you can write down my mobile number yeah so i'm just putting it down uh, for uh, everyone yes dr sardar yes 98332 right 88424 right so i have put uh, dr nikhil sardar's mobile number and of course right. is available at the nanavati hospital uh thank you very much dr sardar for such a detail yeah, my timings in nanavati are uh, evening 6 pm okay. evening 6 pm 6 to 7 all right and afternoons 12:30 to 2 all right okay fine thank you sir thank you thank you very much uh, dr nikhil sadar for uh, for uh, this detailed session and for answering all the questions you know as you see that the number of questions are so many and clearly shows that there is a there is a great hunger for information on uh, on uh, trachoma and various other issues concerning uh, eye care for senior citizens thank you very much once again i hope i didn't bore all of you guys not at all not at all it was a very good and detailed presentation thank you very much and uh, uh, thank you very much to our friends at the nanavati max hospital to have facilitated this thank you very much and we'll be back once again next uh, saturday at 5 pm for our next session of health live at cnr uh, we've exceeded our time so you know those of you who would like to uh, attend our regular sessions uh, please uh, you know visit our website and uh, and 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 be uh, aware of what is there we will put up one um, uh, link to a form in the chat window and you can uh, connect with us and uh, we will keep you informed and pre register you for all our sessions thank you very much and see you next saturday at 5 pm
subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update